again in uh, Deuteronomy 29 at our foundation verse, Deuteronomy 29, 29. The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong to us and our children forever that we may do all the words of this law. The Lord instructed me tonight, or this afternoon rather, before we came over, to make sure that you understand this. God is no respecter of persons. Revealed knowledge is truth. That's right. Yep. And righteousness means it's right. Amen. Do I have any automotive mechanics or aviation mechanics in, or? You know what a righteous engine is? A righteous engine is an engine that has been developed and it has been tweaked and it has been, it has, it has been tested, it has been tried. I mean, it has come through all of the rough spots and it is ready for action. And this, a righteous engine is one that's putting out every ounce of every horsepower it's supposed to, and it's doing it smooth and strong, and it'll do it just as long as you keep feeding the fuel to it. Mm -hmm. That's a righteous engine. Why? It's running right. This ain't all that deep. <laughs> I'm just using a word you're not used to hearing. That thing runs right. You use it all the time. Something mad this thing. What is it? I don't know. It just ain't running right. You could just as easily say, I don't know. The thing's gone unrighteous. So, men, I don't know what's the matter with it. God is righteous. He is right. Every time, <laughs> every time, there is no unrighteousness in him. We have been made the righteousness of God in him. The truth is in you right now. If you made Jesus Christ the, Lord, Christ the Lord of your life, the, the, the righteousness of God is in you now. The right way of everything is in there. I don't care who you are because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. This is a whosoever gospel. Amen. There are no there are no secondary, second-tier people in the family of God. No, sir, my brother and sister. Oh, uh, 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 no. One of the biggest words in the Bible is whosoever. I remember the first time I saw that. I thought, hey, that included me. And then I found this, his mercy endures forever. And I thought, oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. And then I found the big one. Christ died for the ungodly, and I qualified. He came after me, for God so loved the world, and I was part of that world. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But the, the important thing to know here is these laws that are revealed are righteous. They work when they're put to work. For anybody that'll do it God's way. Don't argue about it. Do it. If it says fear not, then fear not. 
You don't stumble around about it and say, well, you know, I'll try. There's no way in that said try. I said do it. I don't care if you're shaking from one end to the other. Just stand up there and say, I refuse to fear. (laughs) (laughs) Now, (laughs) I thought about something Gloria said. She, 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 Gloria's got a way of putting things, you understand? She said, hmm, the sun will shine on anybody that'll get out in it. <laughs> I thought, yeah, I mean, I, I, I said it right there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you got to get up and go outside. That's right. You don't have to figure it out. No, revelation is just that. And it is just the beginning. That's right. It grows and it works and it functions. Now here's where the big problem is. You can't make it work. You have to let it work. And when you start pushing, you're going to shut it down. You are not going to get the credit for making this work. No, that's not our job. Our job is to believe it and let it work. That's, that's what the scripture is talking about when it said, enter into his rest. That's right. Faith always rests. You go get his word on it, you believe it, and you meditate on it, and you think about it, and you mumble around about it, and you talk about it, and you think about it, and you talk about it, and you think about it, and you talk about it, and you think about it, and you read it, and meditate on it, and you're you're working with that verse of Scripture. And it, this this is a bit difficult to put into words. I've had it happen to me many times. And it seems like there's no gradual. <laughs> it, it's, it's not a gradual, progressive thing. It seems like you're just going along and you're doing things and you're just, you're, you, you're staying in faith and you're staying at rest and you just won't let the devil get on you and suddenly <laughs> it seems like all of a sudden on the inside it said, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, uh-huh, yeah, oh, yeah. Same verse, same verse you read yesterday, same verse you read 14 years ago, same verse, but all of a sudden it exploded and got big in your eyes. What happened? Faith was coming. Faith comes. Faith comes. Faith comes, faith comes, faith comes, faith comes, faith comes, comes, and then the cup runs over. That victory point is what you're looking for. You don't wait till the victory point comes and then you begin to believe. No, it don't ever come. That's like walking up to a stove and said, okay, you gave me some heat, I'll put in some wood. No. How do, how do we know that that doesn't work? Because there are certain laws of physics that govern that. It just, and it'll work for anybody that'll do, that'll do it according to the way those laws function. I asked the Lord some years ago, um, I said, Lord, I'm, I'm curious here, I want to know, why is it that most all of the uh, advance in technology and in, um, and at the time I was thinking about aviation and, and uh, I said, I, why is it that, that, that the, the sinners out there in the world, man, I mean, they, they've done more to advance technology than believers have. I said, why is that? He said, because I had to give it to them. He said, I couldn't get my people to do anything about it. 
and he said, I needed the technology now. Now, he said, that's, that has turned around and that's changing because I have people now that'll believe me for these things. He said, I was building those airplanes all along. I couldn't get my people to come get them. He said, they wouldn't even believe me for a new car or very little anything else. But he said, that's turned around. And he said, now, uh, well, let me give you for, for an example. Oh, dear Lord. Just wonderful friends of glory and mine. And uh, he's called Mr. Satellite. And uh, Clyde McGee. Yeah, do you know, do you know Clyde? And uh, <laughs> they were working just almost desperately to put that first communication satellite out there. And the problem they were having was to get that thing where it would synchronize with the earth and stay in one spot to, where one didn't lag behind the other and that kind of thing at 20, 24,000 miles out in space. First, you got to shoot the thing out there and then, you know, whew, and uh, you know how they did it? Clyde was one of the chief engineers. And they had hit a problem. He'd go home and his little wife, about that tall, I'm telling you, that praying machine. She's part of Glory and Billy Brim, all that whole prayer team. And my daughter, Terry, and I mean, that, that, whole, that whole praying bunch. And uh, they'd start praying in tongues. Start praying in the Spirit. Pray also that you interpret and pray and pray and pray. And they, they'd pray and pray. And, and, it, and it, it'd begin to lift. Faith's coming. Faith's coming. And Clyde may have gone back to work after lunch. He's gone, but going back where he was. And, but she's at home praying, and she's praying, and she's believing. And a revelation of it had come. That's the way they put that satellite out there. Now, there was another man that was one of the first prayer ministers in this ministry, not the first, but one of the first. Man, the, the, the most effective man of prayer that I've ever personally known. Yeah. And, um, oh, I wish I had time to go into some of those things that he did. But um, he was in uh, Mac and Lynn Hammond's church up in Minneapolis. And uh, they he and his wife went to church there and they, they traveled and came back. Well, <laughs> uh, Clyde walked, came up on the, on the platform and um, they, were all, they were all up there on the platform praying and, and uh, what's the man's name, Gloria? Huh? Halverson. Philip Halverson. Yeah, Halverson. Thank you, sir. And uh, so he's praying. He's praying in the Spirit. And praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit. And he walked by Clyde. Now, hey, what Clyde was doing is top secret, top more secret than that. You understand? <laughs> Only Clyde and God knew <laughs> what, what's going on here. And uh, Brother Halverson walked over there to Clyde and he, he got on like this and he said, Birds, 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 come out of there. Birds, come out. Birds. He didn't know what he's talking about. Clyde did. He's talking about those satellites. Yeah. They're in there. Do you see what I'm saying to you? That, that all that technology is inside you. It's inside God. God had it all planned before the foundation of the world, and He's inside you. All technology for everything ever will exist is inside you right now. And you sweating out the rent? <laughs> Glory to God. And the thing of it is, these are spiritual laws. They're not set aside 
to work just for a certain one or a certain another. No, the problem has been with the elements of those laws. In the natural world, people just experiment and experiment and experiment and experiment until they finally find something that works, and they do that over and over and over again, and finally, 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 finally. Well, in the spiritual realm, you do the same thing, only it's not trial and error. It's pray and listen. Pray and listen. Pray and listen. And be quiet and be still and listen and listen and listen because the answers are in there. You, they're not in your head. I got, so, I got really, really, really tickled me with Keith Moore. I think about this illustration over and over. It has, it, it, I, it, God has applied it to me again and again. He said, see, worry searches for the answer in the mind. And if it hadn't been put in the mind, it ain't in there. And even if it has, you still may not be able to dig it out of there because the mind is, is if it's functioning carnally, uh, 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 especially. But he said, you're laying there awake at night and you're going through your mind trying to figure this thing out. He said, you're like somebody that goes up to a file cabinet and you pull the file drawer open and you look one file at a time and you get all the way to the back of the drawer. Well, and then you come all the way back to the front again. And then you go all the way back to it again. And he said, after you do that about three times, then you take all the files out and you put them in the floor and you put them back in the drawer one at a time. It ain't in there! <laughs> and now you've been up all night long, you're a grumpy sour push, you ain't having 20 minutes of sleep, and you get up and go to work and can't figure out how come nobody wants to have anything to do with your ugly self. <laughs> Amen. When you could have entered into God's rest, because it's in you, not in your head, it's in you. But if you'll know, if you'll learn how, we're going to get into, into the functions of this tonight. If you learn how, it, it'll, it'll come up into your mind in a usable form. And then one step at a time, it'll begin to unfold, particularly when faith fills. And that, that moment's coming. If you don't get frustrated about it and get a bunch of strife and unforgiveness and that kind of thing. That's the way Satan tries to stop it. And if you fall for it, he will st it will stop it. Now, <clears throat> what did that say? The secret things belong unto the Lord our God, but those things which are revealed belong unto us and our children forever, that we may do all the words of this law or of this covenant. Now, Luke 8, 10 again, Jesus said, talking to you and talking to me, because He is our Lord. What He said it goes to us. Yeah. Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. It is given to you to know. So God has released the knowledge of the secrets by revelation of the Spirit, He has licensed them to us. They are hidden. They're not hidden from us. They are hidden for us unto our glory. They belong to us. Now, let, maybe, maybe this will help you. If every one, everybody, if everybody were to get born again and everybody began to seek first the kingdom of God and His what? Righteousness. His way of being right every time. And all these things 
would be added to us. Now, if everybody on earth was doing that, this planet would flourish and prosper like nobody could even dream. Amen. 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 We wouldn't be worried about global warming. That's right. Amen. Amen. We change it. That's right. Amen. The only reason global warming is still a big topic is because of big government grants. The thing's been cooling off for 10 years. Amen. Come on, people. Well, yeah, we've caused a lot of trashy stuff and done a lot of things, but I'm going to tell you something, darling. Uh, I think maybe you need to read the back of the book. <laughs> Ain't no human being going to tear this planet up. Amen. You and I don't have the authority. We do not have the equipment. That's not going to happen. And no man or no government is going to rule this world until the man and the government anointed to rule this world comes onto this planet. That until then, that ain't going to happen. Now, what I just described to you is what will happen during the millennial reign of Christ Jesus. Because everybody on the earth, Satan will be put in jail for a thousand years. Everybody on the earth is a mixture of glorified ones in the beginning, but then natural life begins to carry on. And you got natural life for a thousand years. There'd be a lot of people here. Nobody dying. So, and the thing being function, functioning under the rule of the law of love. Oh man, you talk about a good place to live. <laughs> this thing going to be good. Well, it'll work. Now, It'll work now. It'll work now in your world. Amen. It's it's not being held back. It's being held for you to keep the devil out of your business. Amen. But the only way you're going to get it is through faith in God and you're going to have to receive it by faith and walk in the things of God. You can't get revelation from God walking in unbelief and fear because you've got clashing forces. It's not because God won't. It's because you're, you're crossing up the fields of action to where they, they're, they're actually the righteousness of God and fear and all that is clashing with one another. And so you're, you're at, a, at a place where spiritual things are not working for you. Now, whether you realize it or not, we read that before the offering. Amen. You sow to your flesh, you reap corruption. Right. This wasn't talking about sinners. This is talking about Christian people. Amen. Talking about people right there in that church at Galatia. Amen. If you're sowing to your flesh, you're going to reap the corruption of the flesh. But if you sow to your spirit, you're going to reap what? Life everlasting, love, joy, peace, goodness, meekness, kindness, temperance. What are the fruit of the spirit? The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Love, joy, peace, patience, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, powerful forces the Bible calls the fruit of the Spirit. They're character traits of God Himself, and when the Holy Spirit came to dwell in you, He brought them with Him. They're designed to bubble up inside of you, to gush forth like a powerful stream. You have a fountain filled with unbeatable life forces inside you. Let it flow. God created you in His image, full of faith, power, and authority to live in victory and change the world around you for Him. In the Your Authority in Jesus package, Kenneth Copeland gives you the answers you need to walk daily in the authority Jesus has provided. The Authority of the Believer, a foundational teaching series by Kenneth Copeland, shows you how authority was given at creation, lost through disobedience, and regained through the victory of Jesus at the cross. He did it all for you. 
The Companion Study Guide has outlines, study focus and declarations, questions, and a place to take notes while you listen. Combine God's Word with your authority and walk in the good works God intended for you. See things change in your family, finances, health, and relationships. Use your authority in Jesus' name. You have authority in this world. Learn how to use it. Order your Authority in Jesus package on CD with accompanying study guide for only $25.99 and enjoy a special savings of 25%. Simply log on to kcm.org slash tbspecial and request your package today. Discover the power available to you to live every moment in authority and in freedom from the curse of the law. We release our faith for the greatest Southwest Believers Convention in history. What kind of convention are we at right now? We will never accomplish apart what we could accomplish together. Not even close. It's not you, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. From here on out, things are going to get greater. You're going to be glad you didn't give up. And in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, be made whole. This conference is going to be the best conference you've ever had in your life. The 2015 Southwest Believers Convention at the Fort Worth Convention Center, June 29th through July 4th in Fort Worth, Texas. One word from God can change your life forever. Kenneth Copeland Ministries is here for you. The Believer's Voice of Victory is available on DVD or CD at kcm.org. You can also view the webcasts online at your convenience or download them as video or audio files. Continue to grow in God's Word and build your faith with this week's product offer. These word-based teachings will help you live in victory. Order your copy today. Receive the great grace God is abounding toward you and live in the blessing.